it's very true that we're always anxious to improve our circumstances. We're always anxious to, to fix the things around us. But so many times we're not anxious to improve ourselves and, and fix ourselves. And so the whole teaching of this is, is that when we start in life, we, you probably started off like I did, and that, that is with, with goal setting. And um, well, let me just tell you a story. Kirk Kampmeyer, when I was in my early 20s, asked me what my plan for growth was. And the bottom line is I didn't have a plan for growth. I didn't know that I was supposed to have a plan for growth. Um, he was the first one that kind of made me aware that, John, growth's not automatic. If you're going to grow, you have to grow intentionally. And uh, so I, I said, okay, I'm going to grow intentionally, but, but I didn't know how to grow. I mean, no one ever, you know, it, it's one thing to ask yourself if you have a growth plan, but I didn't have a growth plan. And I went to my friends and asked them if they had a growth plan, and none of them did. And so I, I desperately began to say, well, how do I grow myself? How do I develop myself? And so I brought something very personal to me today uh, because I'm holding in my hand the, the, where I started my growth plan. This is the dynamics of personal goal setting and it's personal success planner. And it was by Paul Meyer, Success Motivation Institute. And, and this is where I started. This is, this is my first, I, I paid $799 for this. Okay, and, and when I paid $799 for this, uh, that year I made, I, I, was, I started off as a, as a pass. I, that year I made $4,800. So this was huge. This was a, a lot of money, and, and I had to save up for it. I didn't have that kind of money. And so really six months of, of trying and saving, we, we finally got to this. And, and so this is where I started. And, and uh, it, it's, just, it's just very important. It's very special to me. But, but I started my personal growth plan with a goal-setting teaching. And it's got cassette tapes in here, and it's got workbooks, and I worked it through. And I really went through this personal growth plan three times. It, you know, the first time I, I got it, I thought I went back to get some more, and it took me. So I went through it three times. But the reason I brought this with me today is, is for a couple of reasons. One is, is this is when people say, what's the best investment you've ever made in your life? The best investment I've ever made in my life is right here. The $799 I paid, which was an awful lot of money for me, the $799 I paid has been worth millions of dollars for me. The return is incalculable. And, and the reason I say that is because I'm going to challenge you in a personal growth way to invest in yourself. In fact, if you wouldn't invest in yourself, why should anyone else invest in you? I'm always amazed at people who Want me to scholarship them? Want to, you know, would you, would you, would you could you kind of give me, a, give me a, 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 a free lift? And my whole process, no, no. If, if you and I don't bet on ourselves, why should anyone else bet on us? The first bet that I ought to pay is, is on myself. And so this is my first kid, and, and so I brought it with you today to say that I literally started my growth, my whole growth life, Goal setting. And isn't it interesting? I'm talking to you about how do you and I leadership? How do we shift from, from being a, a, a goal setter to a person a, a, that just really works on growth? Because here's what, I, here's what I realized when I started in my growth plan. What I realized was this. The goals I achieved were not as great or as important as the growth that I was receiving in my life. That yes, I was setting goals and, and I was stretching towards those goals and it was a good thing, but, but it was, there was something happening in, in, internally to me that was more than, than places I wanted to go and, and numbers that I, I wanted to reach. And I, I, ex, I experienced two what I call growth changes that I want to give to you. Because I think that when you get on a growth journey that's intentional, you'll discover these same changes also. And the first one is very simple, and that is that I went from growth in everything to growth in essential things. When I started off with my growth, I just said, well, I want to learn everything. And so I just read and, and studied and, and listened to tapes, and I just did everything I could to grow. And, and I, I was just grow, growth, grow. And, and one day it hit me that that was never going to get me to where I wanted to be. That I had to go from trying to grow in every area and everything to, to grow, get, get, get essential. What are the main things that, that you just need to grow in? Now, for me, in my 20s, I came to the conclusion that if I could, um, if I could be successful in relationships, 
If I could become successful in training and equipping people, if I could have an incredible attitude that would help me be an overcomer, and if I could learn to lead and and, and increase influence, if I could do those four things, relationships, equipping, attitude, leadership, if I could grow in those four areas, then I probably could be successful. And so I committed that these are the areas I'm going to grow in. And so I, I began to eliminate a lot of stuff so that I could grow in what I would call, for me, the main stuff. And I would say to each one of you in all of our sites and here locally that, that what you've got to do is when you start your growth plan, becoming intentional, you got to ask yourself, what are the areas I'm going to grow in? You can't grow in everything. You don't even want to grow in everything, but you, but you got to grow in the essential things. For me, R-E-L, relationships, equipping, attitude, and leadership. And later on, I, I added communication because I knew that I would spend my life as a, a connector and a communicator. And because I am a person of faith, faith. And pretty much for 40 plus years, these have been my six essentials. Learning how to connect with people, learning how to train, equip others, having an attitude to help me overcome, learn how to lead and expand influence, learn how to communicate well, and and, and then become the person of faith that that I really want to become. This, this become. This is where I really spent my time. The second change I had in the area of growth was I went gro- from growth with a timeline to growth without a finish line. Now, this was a, an amazing experience that I had because when I started my growth journey, I, I, I thought in terms of, well, okay, uh, there'll be a, a, a finish line somewhere. There'll be a, a time when, when I've accomplished that. There'll be a time where I have achieved this. There'll be a time where I have arrived. And so I, so I, had, a, I had a timeline out there and... I heard Earl Nightingale say that if you spent an hour a day every day on a certain given subject, now that's back to the essentials, R-E-A-L, that stuff. If you spent an hour a day every day on a a certain given subject for five years, you could become an expert on that subject. Now, that really excited me because at this time I'm falling in love with leadership. I'm buying into the idea everything rises and falls on leadership. And so here we go. I'm excited and I said, okay, I'm going to spend an hour a day every day for five years to become an expert on the subject of leadership. And that's what I did. Now, back then, there were not a lot of leadership books out. They were mainly management books. If you go back in the, well, if you go back in the 70s and 80s, you go into bookstores, you didn't find leadership books. You found management books. And and so I read some management books, and it it, kind of got me going in in the right way. But I would talk to people that were leaders. I would try to do leadership experiences an hour every day, and, and every day, every week, as I would go through this process, I'd ask myself this question, how long will it take? Well, Earl Nightingale said it'd take five years. Well, so, I, so I'm, now I'm, I, I'm not only reading and studying and learning and experiencing, guess what else I'm doing? I, I'm counting down. I, 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 I think I'm Mr. Cape Canaveral. And I'm going, you know, five, you know, wow, four, you know, woo, three. And, I'm, and, and I, can, I can smell it. I, it's out there. I'm, I'm getting close. That, there's going to be some light in this tunnel pretty soon. And I was about halfway in this five-year run of countdown until something happened. It wasn't anything I read. It wasn't anything that somebody came and set aside me and, and mentored me on or, or kind of gave me some thoughts or advice. About halfway in this journey, the inside of me switched. I was receiving so much value from my personal growth. I was, rece- I, I was learning so much about leadership. I, I, was, I, I was growing so much internally that I stopped counting. And I, I left the question, how long will it take? And I picked up the question, How far can I go? Now, you and I, we're very passionate about this. It's, a, it's the world of which we've, we've grown up in. But let's transition now from personally, and, and let's talk about John in the growth process talks about team growth, and he talks about others' growth that he gave us in the outline that, that we have right here. Talk a little bit about, as a leader, when it comes to leading our team and our organization, the things that you really focus on from a, from a growth standpoint, making sure that... Um, we are growing as an organization, and we're not staying stagnant. Yeah, you know, back in December, we we were diligently setting our 
our budgets and our business plan objectives in place for here 2022, and here we are. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're folks in this. And so I'm thinking back <clears throat> right now to a conversation I had with one of our uh, P&L owners, and uh, we're talking through his vehicle of how he is planning for this year for 2022. There was no comparative analysis on his budget at this particular phase in the budgeting. And I asked him, I said, hey, hey, how did we do in this con- in, in this line last year? Well, I'm not sure, but I can get that answer for you, Mark. Well, w- we're, we're growing, we're projecting 28% revenue in this particular solutions group. How much of your cost, how much of your cost are you going to absorb? Is that good revenue or is it bad revenue? Right. What, what did we do last year according to revenue? Well, I'm not sure. Let me check. Here, I illustrate that without names. Very purposely, it's not you though, Chris Goddard, you can feel good about this. I illustrate this for this reason right here to answer this question. I believe the greatest way to measure your business, now this is going to freak some of you out, is based on growth, not on goals. Mm. Because I I, want to say this because it's really important. I believe hitting a small goal is worse than missing a big goal. Now, we may unpack that if we have time because... I have worked alongside people that did not agree with me, said it was an integrity issue. Well, and I've been frustrated with you in the past if we're just being candid when you come in and challenge us. And and, and yeah, it's absolutely. uh, And we'll come back to that because I want to stay on this point of how do we manage our business in the John Maxwell Enterprise. And from day one of me running this organization 11 years ago, it's been on competitive uh, comparative analysis. Comparative analysis, here's what I mean. When I get a business plan from you, Chris, or somebody else on our team, I want to know how this compares to what we did last year in this particular business objective. Even when we're spending money, when we're hiring more people, I want to know what our cost of goods sold was last year compared to what we think they're going to be this year. Why? Because it creates one of our values. This is why we're so passionate about this. This is why I have the book right here for you. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. It's because I believe with the value of growth, we should always be focused on growth. And John teaches goals will take care of themselves. Yeah. Again, I'm not minimizing those of us that have to work to set goals and, and, and be goal-minded. But we have learned, and I, we grew, me and you, our leadership team grew, our company, from the day I took over as CEO till last year, we grew 783%. That's a big number. That's yeah. a big goal. We did that by focusing on growth. We focus on growth by comparative analysis to the same period last year, the same concept last year, the same business line. So on any any budget, I look at the budget and I want to know, is there a number compared to budget? Is there a number compared to performance last year? And is there a percentage of growth from last year to this year or a decrease of spending this year compared to last year? It's all on comparative analysis. I felt like I I should have been taking notes right there to make sure that (laughs) in all of our meetings moving forward. You see, nothing is great until a life has changed. You do understand that. So you, you can have a good conference. You can't have a great conference. Great is only what they do with it after the conference. You can have a good book, but the, but the book becomes great when it changes the life. And, and so many times we count our victories before we have victories. We count our victories because we just look good when we walk across the stage. And everybody clapped and everybody was happy and we thought, oh my gosh, what a good conference. There's, every, everything escalates and gets better when the people get better. And if the people don't get better, it wasn't that good. And if the people don't change, if the people don't grow, and if the people, if the people just aren't reproducing, it never becomes great. See, leaders understand greatness is, begins with them and what they teach and inspire their people to be and do. But the result of greatness is in the proof of the people. It's in the people. So if you say, well, I, I'm, a, I'm a great leader. Well, how many great leaders have you reproduced? So you're not a great leader because you have followers. 
You're a great leader because you've reproduced leaders. And so this is going to be a huge day. You're, I, I'm promising you're going to fill pages of notes, not just a page or two. That's, I don't know who does that, but you're going to fill pages of notes. You're, 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 going, to have to, <clears throat> you're going to have to go straight from here to a, a massage therapist. <laughs> you're going to say, just work the hand, work the hand. We just, just work the hand. Been, I've, I've been taking a lot of notes because one of the things we do in the John Maxwell Company, it's, it's a reputation of mine to give you more than you can handle. You with me? Did you ever go to hear somebody speak and you just kind of sit there for a while and kind of hope for a miracle? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just say, I know it's, it, it, I, it will sometime get better. And you know, and, and, and have you ever kind of sometimes kind of want to just walk up and say, you know what, you're not very good. Let me give you a couple thoughts here. <laughs> just say these, it'll help you. It'll take you to a new level, huh? Now, the reason I say that is, is, um, we work very hard. You're here by invitation. I mean, we do these things quite a bit. We've got to pack this thing out many, many times. But we just said, no, just we want the right people in the room. We want the right people in the room because then it reproduces itself. So I've worked hard. Uh, I'm going to do the laws of growth. I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, how many of you have the, the book, 15 Laws of Growth? Raise your hand. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. That's very good. You notice I didn't ask how many of you had read it? I'm delighted today to talk to you about some of the laws of leadership. And the first one I want to talk to you about is truly the first one I should talk to you about. Now, there are 15 of them, but you have to understand there's one that I think is foundational for the other 14. Not more important, but foundational, and that's the law of intentionality. And that's where we're going to begin today. The law of intentionality just basically says growth is the only guarantee that tomorrow is going to get better. Oh, isn't that good? <laughs> if you're going to grow, and, and if I'm going to grow, we're, we're going to grow intentionally. Now, I, I'm talking to leaders today. I love talking to, to people that lead many people. And to be honest with you, if, if I could just literally come off the stage and, 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 and I could get real close to you and we could have kind of like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. There are two questions that I would ask you and the two questions I'm about to ask you will really determine how successful you're going to be in this business without any question. These are the two questions. It's not like there's three or there's four or there's seven. There's two. Okay. Just trust me on this. I'm an old man. I know this. I've been around the block a few times. And there are two questions that if you can answer in a positive way about yourself, you're going to be very successful. And if you really cannot answer that in a positive way, to be honest with you, you're not going to be near as successful as you would like to be. And the first question is very simple. What are you doing to develop yourself? And if you'd say, "Boy, gosh, John, I'll tell you right now, I'm doing a lot to develop myself. I, I mean, I've got a personal growth plan, and, and I'm intentional in this, and I'm, I'm doing this on a daily deal. If you could say that to me, then I'd say, hey, we're, we're in good shape here. We're, we're in good shape because that's the key. You know, what are, what are you doing to develop yourself? And, and by the way, the reason that's first is not because you want to be selfish. It's kind of like almost a selfish question. person says, well, why do I start with myself? The reason you start with yourself is because you cannot give what you do not have. So you better start with yourself. Because if you're leading others and have nothing to give them, nothing to share with them, nothing to teach them, then I can promise you, you'll never be what you want to be as a leader. And I can promise you that after 40 years of personal growth, the secret of any success, if I've had any success at all, the secret of that success has been personal growth in my life. And, and growth has, has literally placed me where I am. So, so what are you doing to develop yourself? It's a huge question. And the 15, laws of, uh, of the 15 laws of personal growth, basically these laws are all about developing yourself and developing the second question, what are you doing to develop others? You, you see, on the first question, you're foundational for your future. The second question is all about compounding multiplication. That's where you build a huge business, when you know how to develop other people. And what we have to understand about the law of intentionality is that you cannot develop yourself and you cannot develop your people unless you're intentional. 
And I discovered that in my 20s when I sat down and had breakfast with a guy named Kirk Kampmeyer at the Holiday Inn in Lancaster, Ohio, and he asked me the question, John, do you have, do you have a plan for personal growth in your life? Didn't have a plan. Didn't know I was supposed to have a plan. Nobody ever told me I was supposed to have a plan. I graduated. I was working hard, doing my very best to reach my potential. But nobody ever walked in my life until Kirk Kampmeyer did and said, John, do you have a plan for personal growth in your life? And I didn't have one. I was embarrassed. I thought back then I had to have answers. And so I acted as if I did, and that didn't really work very long. I was kind of like a plane circling airfield trying to come in for a landing. Found I just shut up and landed that plane. And he looked at me, and I'll never forget, he said, you don't have a plan, do you? And I said, no, I don't have a plan. And then he said to me, John, growth is not automatic. If you're going to have to grow, you're going to have to grow on purpose. That day, my life was changed. What, what Kurt was saying is, if you're going to grow, you have to be intentional. I mean, it, 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 start, it starts with me. So, so look at the person you're seated beside and just say to them, this will kind of be like a get acquainted time with him. Just look at him and say, you really need to improve. Go ahead and tell me that, right? <laughs> you really need to. Now, now, wasn't that fun? Wasn't that fun? Isn't it, isn't it fun to just look at somebody and say, you know what, you really need to improve. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just, it just rolls naturally off the tongue. Now look right back at him and say, I need to improve. Now you said that with a lot less enthusiasm. I mean, did you hear that? I mean, when I said, tell the other person you need to improve, I mean, it was loud. You need to improve. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need to improve. Yeah, I, I need to improve. Now, the problem is we have what I call growth gaps. The reason that we're not intentional in our growing is there are just some gaps that, that keep us from from getting to where we need to go. And I'm going to give you about a half a dozen of them really quickly. The, the first one is, is the assumption gap. And, and the assumption gap just basically says, or is I assume that I'll grow automatically. You see, most people, they live by assumption. 99% of people today are assuming, just assuming, that somehow they'll get better. Very sad, folks, very sad. Because let me tell you something about assumption. Assumption is a huge disappointment in life. You show me a person that assumes, and I'll show you a person that almost daily is disappointed. So the, the first gap is a gap that leaves many people short, and that's just a pure assumption gap. The second one is, is the knowledge gap. And the knowledge gap is, is basically, I don't know how to grow. And we've all been there. In other words, okay, I know that I need to be intentional in my growth, but I really don't, I really don't know how to grow. I, I've been there. Now, I, I brought something with me today that's very special. It, it's a kit. And, and I, I, I'm just so pleased to have this because this kit is very important to me. Now, now it, it, it cost me $799. And I, and I got this kit. I got this kit back I got this kit back in 19, in the 1970s, okay? And, and, and this was my first personal growth kit. It's, uh, uh, you know, the dynamics of personal goal setting um, by Paul Meyer, personal success planner. And, and I was so excited. It cost $799. I, now, you have to understand, I made about $800 a month. So get the picture. It took me six months to buy this kit. I, I saved up. We didn't have credit cards back then, and I just, I just saved up and, and worked hard, and it took me six months before I had enough cash to, to buy this kit. And I was, so, I was so excited when I got it, and, uh, uh, and, and I mean, I opened it all up, and it, this is just amazing. I just, it had, I mean, you'll just see some things here that just crack you up. It had, for some of you young people, you've never seen this before. They're called cassette tapes. 
And I remember taking the first cassette tape out, put it on my little cassette player, opening this up. Oh my gosh, this was so wonderful. That wasn't. <laughs> they had, I mean, they had page by page plans. This, and I mean, I, I, I go through the plans and listen to the tapes and go through the plans, listen to the tape, go to the plans, listen to the tape. This is my first growth experience. And the ROI on this $799 can. It's worth millions of dollars to me. Yeah, you heard me right. Millions of dollars. And experiences and a lifetime of growth. And what's interesting is, now here's what I want you to hear. The value of this kit, the content was good, but that wasn't the value. The content was good. But, but as I look back now, I say, what made this so special? What made this so special is very simple. This is the kit that got me started. Hear me out. The value of what you do for people is not so much what you give to them as much as it challenges them to get started. Getting started is absolutely the key to life. And by the time I finished going through this personal growth kit, by the time that was all finished, I, I, I had six months of day in, day out, personal growth. And what it did is it developed a habit in my life. And, and by the time I, I finished with that kit, now I, I'm, used to, I'm used to spending time every day in, in personal growth. It, it got me started. I mean, this is, this is worth this whole lesson if you can just get this. The reason I'm so passionate about personal growth is personal growth keeps me prepared. In other words, if I'm continually growing, I continue developing myself, and I'm continually learning, and I'm continually doing new things and, and going to a, another step higher, can I tell you what that is? That, that constant growth is the preparation for the opportunity. So when the opportunity comes, it's, I, 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 here's the way. You don't go into an opportunity. You grow into an opportunity. And so I'm passionate about personal growth because for that person who says, wow, I, I, I had an opportunity, I wasn't ready. If you're growing, you're always ready. Because after I intentionally started growing, I made a commitment to grow as a leader. I started writing. I became an author. I developed growth resources for other people. I founded my first company. I began training conferences. Everything I can think of that has ever been good in my life was a result of the fact that I started personal growth in my life. I know, I know I'm known for leadership. I understand that. But my passion in life, more than anything else, is personal growth. Because if, if you grow personally, you can be a great leader. You, but if you don't grow personally, you can't be a good leader. Everything in life, everything in life that you're ever going to want is based upon your ability to develop yourself. So Kirk Kampmeyer said, John, um, you, you, you've, you can't just accidentally grow. You've got to grow on purpose. And so I started and I got to thinking yesterday when I was getting ready to kind of my last preparation for this lesson, I, 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 I got started. And guess what? When I got started, let me tell you what I didn't have. I didn't have experience. I didn't have knowledge. I did not have a model. I did not have a mentor. I did not have a plan. I did not have a fellow traveler. I did not have resources. I did not have money. I did not have a growth environment. But I got started. You don't stop or not start because of what you don't have. You don't start because you don't realize yet that the fruit of everything good in life begins with a challenge. There's nothing easy in life, worthwhile in life. Everything is a pill that's worthwhile. And, and, and there's, it's not going to come to you, and it's not going to fall in your lap, and it's not going to be something that, oh, my gosh, I, it just was so simple. It's always going to be difficult. 
the things that he believes in, and he gives a list of things, uh, values that John believes in. And so how have these values, would you say, changed or evolved? They haven't changed, but have they evolved over time? Just those first ones, um, we talked a little bit before we came came and started recording, but talking about personal growth, if you want to expand on that, and even making a significant contribution, that really has, I feel like, has become almost the such a big part of what Maxwell Leadership is all about, both of those two things. Well, it's interesting, and, and that I, I do want to take those two. I could take all six of them. Right. I could give you our seven values. That's not totally the point of the lesson today. The importance of the lesson is the importance of values and the sustainability of the values and the sustainability of the organization if you put importance and sustainability on the responsibility of your values, right? Your organization will last the longer you allow values to be valuable in the organization. Mm -hmm. So personal growth is one that, I I mean, we've watched John Maxwell not launch a book writing career to sell books, Mm -hmm. but to launch a book writing career to show others what he's learning. Mm -hmm. He he is an Mm -hmm. infinite learner. He grows with a plan to always be growing forever. He does not grow with a destination perspective. Mm -hmm. He grows with a journey perspective. And I think that's really important. And so some pieces of personal growth has not changed, will not change, shall never, ever, ever, ever be changed. Mm -hmm. Because personal growth, we believe, is the foundation of good leadership. Leadership starts on the inside. And goes to the outside. So personal growth is huge. Now, what we have done, I talked about this in a recent podcast, we have created an environment of personal growth because a lot of people don't know how to grow. Right. So we created the personal growth app. The leadership, Maxwell Leadership Personal Growth App was to help people get a tangible, quantifiable, qualitative approach to growth. We're using John's clear method on how to help people grow. You're a part of that as a guide, Tracy. So that's on personal growth. We're passionate about it. We're just continuing to re-engineer the fact that as long as you and I are leading, Mm -hmm. as long as you and I are breathing, we will always be needing to grow ourselves personally. And I love that John Maxwell models that at a personal level as well as a professional level. The second thing, and I'll close with this. It's been a great podcast, but is he said, number two, making a significant contribution. Mm -hmm. John's famous. In fact, he wrote in this book. I brought the book with me today. He wrote in the book, Change Your World, his statement, his mantra Mm -hmm. for transformation, Mm -hmm. for for making a significant difference. I want to make a difference, doing something that makes a difference at a time that makes a difference with people that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. That's how John worded Number two, I want to make a significant contribution. We now call that transformation. Mm -hmm. So it's the same concept. It's significance. It's making a contribution. But transformation means to us, after an interaction with us in one of our products or one of our podcasts, an expectation is that transformation, a change, an improvement, a transformed quality Mm -hmm. begins to be demonstrated because of an interaction with us. That all comes from making a significant contribution. We call it significance sometimes. Mm -hmm. We go from success to significance. Mm -hmm. Once you've tasted significance, success will never satisfy. Some of our buzzwords that we have today is just a restatement of what John said many, many years ago. I want to make a significant contribution. Mm -hmm. In fact, I believe one of the shared traits of all of our podcast family I know it's one of mine and your shared traits, Tracy, is we want to be a part of doing significant things, making a difference. One of the things I challenged my team to do today is off this book, Change Your World, that John wrote. I hope many of you have the book. If you don't, we'll put it in the show notes where you can get it. But really what I want to share with you today is we created a course on how to change your world how to make a significant contribution. And uh, we, we put in our show notes a way for you to link over to that program, that content that will help you make a significant difference. It's an online course. We're going to give you 15% off on that. If you go and use the code podcast, when you click on that link in the show notes, it will help you realize and make a significant difference in your life. Again, Pick up the book, 
do the online course because we are about making a significant contribution. I want to I want to just really make this final standout statement. Then I want to read a, a listener question and attempt to answer it, Tracy. But we did a video recently in our foundation. Our foundation is all about bringing transformation to communities and areas around the world that have the least amount of access to transformative qualities, need transformation the most, and can't seem to get access to it. And so our our foundation, the Maxwell Leadership Foundation, exists for those kind of communities, those kind of countries and, and schools around the world. We were just uh, showing a video, Tracy. I don't know if you saw it. We showed it at a recent foundation fundraiser that we had of this little girl in Costa Rica, grew up in a terrible situation. And she made a quote that impacted me forever. She said, when I started reading the I Lead curriculum, that's a values transformation quality curriculum, she said, I realized that the most valuable thing I have in life, we did this in our home where there was not running water. It was a desperate, difficult situation. Mm -hmm. She said, I realized that the most valuable thing I have is my values. Wow. Wow. Tearjerker. Blew us away. Yeah. And really, it's this statement that value your values. Mm -hmm. For many of us, the most valuable thing that we have, even whether we're like Angela, the little girl that has nothing, nothing in Costa Rica, or perhaps you're like me, you have more blessings than you imagine. I still would challenge you that the most valuable thing you have is your values. We had a question from one of our listeners uh, today that I want to read. It's from Larry. Larry was inspired by the leader who motivates podcast episode. He said, Mark, the thing about influence is that no one ever tells you that at, that you have influence. Mm -hmm. I agree, Larry. <laughs> he said, so it requires us to be ready to see it and hear it as much as we watch others. My question is, can you provide some thoughts and insight on this topic and your experiences? How can we know when we have influenced someone? Mm. It's such a good question. You know, I'm a words of affirmation guy. So first I'd say, Larry, is when people are giving you affirmation. Hey, this podcast matters. This podcast makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Those those matter to me. And I take those comments as I'm making a difference. I'm influencing others. I think the other thing that I like to do with leadership around me is I like to identify desired outcomes after a year of my of my leadership in their life. After a mentorship session that I give people, I'll go, hey, I'll mentor you, but what's your desired outcome for this mentorship? In other words, we state the expectations up front, and then we work toward those expectations all along the relationship. And then the final thing I would tell you, Larry, is when you are done, do what John Maxwell does every time he walks off the stage. He goes, did I add value to you? Did this help you? And whether it's a relationship that you're mentoring, whether it's a relationship in an organization where you're the leader, when you're finished helping someone, ask them the question, did I help you and how? I'm going to give you an intentional growth plan right now. It's just so simple. Let's go. Okay. Here's, here's my intentional growth plan. Number one, number one, make a commitment to intentionally grow. That's where it starts. You say, well, John, that, that seems really simple. Make a commitment to intentionally grow. Guess what? It's really simple. Make that commitment to intentionally grow. Number two, make that commitment public. A commitment that is not public is worthless. Because let me tell you something. We all have a tendency to stray. We all have a tendency to give up. We all have a tendency to get off course. Come on. There's something beautiful about a shared commitment. A shared commitment becomes a strong commitment. Number three, identify the areas that you want to grow personally in. Identify them. In other words, sit down and say, okay, where am I going to grow specifically? Now, let me, I'm going to help you here. When you start identifying the areas that you're going to grow in, it should be at least two and no more than five. Five's probably a little heavy, but, but it has to be at least two. You say, well, I, how about just focusing on one? Let me, let me tell you why. You want to grow in an area of choice and you want to grow in an area of skill. So that's two. 
So when I'm talking about an area of choice, I'm talking about maybe your attitude. That's a choice, isn't it? So, so I want to grow in an area of choice. Maybe it's discipline. And I want to grow in an area of skill. So when, for, for me, I started off with attitude and speaking because I was, I was speaking. I was a pastor. I, I, want to, I want to be a better communicator. So I said, okay, speaking, that's a skill. I'm going to work on that. I'm, 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 going, to work on, I'm going to work on my attitude. So identify what, what, what are the two areas, at least, that you're going to grow in. And then number four, invest one hour a day in those two areas. Every day, including Sundays. Every day, seven days, 724, seven. Every day, be, okay. And, and when, you, when, you, when you spend that hour, I won't even tell you how to spend the hour. You spend the hour this way. Here's the way it works. Preparation, practice, reflection. Preparation, practice, reflection. Reflection. Preparation, practice, reflection. Preparation, practice, reflection. You do it every day. Whether it's your choice or whether it's your skill. You prepare a little bit, practice a little bit, reflect a little bit. Every day. You're going to find this is just huge for your life. Number five, invest one hour a week on reflection and writing on what you're learning. To take an hour every week and say, okay, for the last seven days, this is what I've been practicing, this is what I've been, this is what I've been pre- preparing for, this is what I've been reflecting, and, 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 and start that. Now, now let, me tell you, let me tell you the secret on this. Because uh, I'm kind of now talking about writing. I'm talking about maybe journaling a little bit. Let me tell you something. Don't, don't try to journal a lot. Start with jotting. Jot before you journal. See, I jot every day. I don't journal every day, but I jot every day. Four or five words. Oh, my gosh. They're just, they're just mental kicks for me, okay? And then at the end of the week, you may have like 12 jots down. You with me? And you go get those jots, and you say, okay, now I'm going to spend 35 minutes. I'm going to start writing. What, 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 did, what did that mean to me? Just, just jot and then journal. And then number six, share your growth with someone. Every week, find somebody that you can share your growth with. And let me, let me tell you how this works. You sit down with oh, I want to tell you what I'm learning. I want to tell you how I'm growing. Now, here's, here's how this works. This is beautiful. When you share your growth with someone, if they're happy, do it the next week. You with me? Oh, they ha- okay. Well, let me share. Can I share with you now? See, so what, if they're happy, keep sharing. If they're not happy, start moving. Don't ever spend time with people that aren't thrilled with your progress. The friends I dropped in my early years, the friends I dropped in my early years were those people that weren't thrilled with my progress. Are you with me? They weren't thrilled at all with my progress. Those are the ones I left behind. I got some new friends. That's what you've got to do. Because let me tell you something. If you become intentional in your growth, You'll outgrow almost everybody you know. Chris, uh, what has it been, 20-plus years that you and I have been in this environment? And we've (laughs) talked about growth, I guess, every way that we can, and yet today it's just as relevant in your 20-plus years of tenure, executive on our team, running the nation, uh, running around the nation, speaking, and yet you're still growing. I know that about you, and I'm the same way. I've just been challenged. Even most recently, I've been challenged to grow significantly. And so, hey, I never get tired of this subject, and I never get tired of this subject talking to it with John, 75 years young. Still doing it. Still doing it. Never get tired of working alongside of people like you that's still doing it. So, man, I'm excited. Yeah, when I uh, found out that this was the topic we were going to talk about, I was like, this is so appropriate because— I don't know where I'd be today if I didn't right. work in an environment. I know you would say the same thing. And then to be it to be modeled by John, it's not you, you're on the road with John. You guys are at different conferences, speakers, and meetings. And without a doubt, I always see him taking notes. Then you get in the car and you're like, man, here's what I learned. What did you learn? You better be ready to answer that question because yeah. we he just models that. And he's yeah. kind of given that to us. So much so that I, I brought this for those that are watching on YouTube. I love it. Okay, this is a little show and tell. Um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, I did it yesterday, too, in our leadership team meeting. I'm in a show and tell mode. We're going <laughs> back to elementary school. I like it. Uh, but that's all right. So much so that as you helped us cast vision 
and come up with our our mission and what's important our organization and we do believe that everybody deserves to be led well obviously you wanted people first we we get that that's 100 percent us the second one we have on our card and every single one of our team members have this is it is about growth and on there it talks about we invest in growth every day doesn't matter whether you're 18, 19, 20, when you and I began to think about what that looked like, or even now, and I won't mention our age <laughs> yeah. as we get into yeah. this, um, but but we also believe that it happens daily, not in a day. And what I love about that is that um, John says, if we want things to get better, then we've got to go after it on a daily basis. Now, I'm going to take you down a little bit, if you don't mind, I want to take you down a little bit of a different path than maybe normal. I want to go away from the notes for a minute, and we're going to come back. And we've heard John talk about um, everything worthwhile is uphill. Yep. And man, growth, growth can be an uphill battle. Yeah. It doesn't often happen when we're going downhill and things are good. And I want to talk a little bit. I want to kind of lift the curtain on some things that you've been growing personally. And I think it's so appropriate because you were so intentional behind this. And it started. Let me. I think growth happens in a lot of ways. Yeah. You can you can observe it and learn. You can teach and learn. You can get feedback and learn. Matter of fact, um, I was on a call today with one of the organizations that we work with and. Uh, it was Matt McLean with Wealth yeah. Advisors. Let me just yeah. read this real quick to you. It says, man, feedback is a gift. It's where you grow. When given by the right person in the right manner and re- and received in the right way. And I thought, oh, that's so good. Tell me that again. I'm going to be with Mark later, yeah. and I want to share this with him. It received that. in the right way. Here's where I'm going. You started a journey intentionally the fourth quarter of last year. Yep. We called it the family rooms. And Mark set the stage and you said, hey, family rooms sometimes get uncomfortable. I want feedback. And that began a growth journey that I haven't seen in you in a long time. And we're going to unpack that just a minute. But what I want you to do is I want you to take us back. And what was the intentionality behind saying, man, I want feedback. I want these family room conversations. I want to grow. I want us as an organization and a culture to grow. Talk to us a little bit about that to set the stage of now uh, what you're doing, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Well, I, I started getting a little bit of feedback from teammates, and mm. I started getting feedback from key relationships like our thought leaders that perhaps our culture was missing a, a, a beat mm. or was missing a little bit of something. Come to find out it was we were we were saying more than what we were doing. We, we were not completely matched up in our actions. Um, so it started there, and then that caused me to go, I've got a problem in the organization. What is our problem? What What is that? And this is not a at all a negative thing. This is very po- powerful and positive as we unpack yeah. this, I'm sure. But um, I went to John, and I did something that I do all the time with John. I state the problem. I see if we have agreement on our problem. And then I'm always prepared with three suggestions to remedy the problem and then a recommendation. Here's three suggestions, John, but here's my recommendation. And John and I just have this formula for how we have led him, the visionary, the owner, and me, the CEO, the implementer of his vision. Well, that has changed a little bit, but John's John's mentoring in my life has not changed. We still have that same formula. Yeah. So I went to John. I said, here's my problem. And what was interesting, and I won't dig into this because that's not the subject today, John didn't agree with me. Mm. Now, we beat it up for about 10 hours of playing time. We just, John, this is why I think this is the problem. Yeah, I think it is the problem. No, it's not the problem, Mark. No, it's not. And finally, after he had listened to me long enough, which was about 10 hours, he identified the real problem. Mm. And the real problem was that I needed to get roll up the sleeves and get engaged in the lifeblood, in the culture, in, in the day-to-day rigor of our organization. Yeah. And so that started it. And so the best way I knew to do that as a conclusion to John and I saying, I've got to roll up the sleeves and get involved in what's going on in the organization or these family rooms, Chris, you were a part of them. Yeah. And uh, in fact, you were a part of the very first I one. Was. I remember this. Yeah. I had, man, they were about 12 or There's 13 a lot. of them. dedicated a lot of time to it. And, and in, those, in those family rooms, Chris, a, a, a real reoccurring opportunity, challenge, opportunity yeah. to really address things in the organization mm-hmm. began to bubble up. And uh, it was that. Then we've had a lot of leadership meetings with that. I've validated that, verified that with the leadership team. But it all started with a realization, hey, I think I have a problem. Then it went to the next step, John and I agreeing on the problem of, in the organization. And then we're beginning to be intentional about fixing it. And I love the fact that John says the only guarantee 
yeah. that it's going to get better from what you heard. You yep. accepted that feedback and, um, and the hearts were pure. You received it the right way. And John says, the only way it's going to get better is, well, is if we grow and yeah. you got to do that. So I'm going to go out of order a little bit here. John gave us a, an incredible growth plan here. And I'm going to go a little bit out of order because I know the process that you went through to do this. The first thing that you did was you said, I'm going to go and I'm going to reflect on what I heard. And you, you do this every year. The timing of this happened to be pivotal this year for you, but you spent, John mentioned at least one hour a week. I think you accomplished a, a year long process <laughs> of that <laughs> in probably just about three days. Talk about then what you heard, what you learned as you're growing through this. Uh, and the reflection and how powerful that was and allowed you to come out of that with a tremendous growth plan that we'll talk about after that. Yeah, so the, the, before the growth plan, it started with, um, I, I read a book, I think I have recommended on the podcast, Chris, it's by Gary Keller, which is one of the founders of Keller Williams. Yeah. Gary Keller wrote a book called The One Thing. Mm. And he talks about how that leaders need to synthesize down to that one thing they need to be focused on, and then they need to spend the best part of their day in that. Mm. For me, the best part of the day is the morning. So immediately coming out of family rooms, Chris, you'll remember this, I carved out and canceled everything that I did every morning of the week because I had identified five things that needed my undivided attention five things in our organization. And I came out of those, mm. that family room. I had already carved out every morning was going to be focused on my one thing. And I started focusing for four solid weeks, four hours a day on one thing in the morning for four hours on what I could do from a creativity and from a problem-solving perspective that I could begin focusing on it focusing on in the organization. So it really started there way before the growth plan that we'll get to. I started really assessing mm -hmm. with a clear mind, with an undistracted, with, with an undistracted attention, and then with as much creativity that I could muster in a in a one-on-one, -on -one, one to myself yeah. environment. Yeah. I began working through how do I creatively go after these five areas. So you go through that and then you make up your mind, I am going to intentionally grow. Now talk a little bit about the next steps for you. So John says, hey, we're going to make a commitment. So you did the reflection. You're making a commitment. Now for you, that growth looked like many different things. Mentors, books, you're just absorbing content and you are committed. Talk about where your mind went when you said, I know I need to grow and I'm going to absorb as much content as I possibly can. What led you down the path of saying, what resources, how do I tap into this? What does that look like? Let let our listeners hear from that, because I think each one of us have challenges like that in our life. And sometimes we don't know how to go about the process, but you've lived out and modeled this. And John's given us his plan and it's in direct alignment with that. Yeah. Well, one is if you can synthesize down what the real problem is and you can synthesize it down to as much simplicity as possible you're going to then be able to build the best comprehensive focused plan available. We distilled it down to we had a momentum challenge. We, we, you're, you're part of the organization last year. Congratulations on Podcast Land. What was it, 47? 46%, 46 percent, yeah. growth last year. This guy right here that you're seeing, if you're watching YouTube, this guy wow. grew 47%. But now let me say that. What was interesting is, is I still could come back and say our common problem was momentum. Correct. That was with some parts of our organization having best years ever, some teammates having be personal best years ever. We still had a momentum problem to what? To the vision that unified us all together. So if you can come up with a common route to the problem, because that'll establish common language when yeah. you begin to build this intentionality right. around a plan. So the problem, and then figure out a way to unify everybody to the same problem. That was a that was a dance. That was a challenge yeah. because I got some people sitting across from me that killed it last year, and I had some people on his team that had personal best, and then I had other teammates that we just were not out of the starting blocks yet. So how do I unify everybody on we have a momentum problem? So synthesize it to as much simplicity as possible. Yeah, That's that. why we have a word for the year. You have a word for the year. I, I heard what it was. I've got one. My whole growth plan is around that. Well, the plan to... 
get the organization on the track that it needed, needed that kind of simplicity too. What's the word and how does that word apply to mm, everybody? Because if you can get that word to a simplest form and then you can get everybody seeing their way to embrace the word from how it will help them, now we're on a track to begin to build that plan. Yeah, it became our rallying cries is, right. in essence is what you were doing no matter – where each vertical um, or team was doing it didn't matter as a as a as a whole as a team that became our rallying cry together. So you and and I and I've heard you say simplify a ton of times in the last mm-hmm. ninety days. So you simplified the problem and you go okay now I got to grow in that area. Yep. Talk to us a little bit about what yep. you had. And so, remember, we're trying to keep this podcast under three hours. Yes, and exactly. So, but <laughs> but I know how intentional you were yeah. about that and the amount of resources you consume. Talk about that process. I'm privileged to have a weekly call with a bunch of leader-minded people. So I, the, I, I, I ask about four people that I really believe could help me in the area of momentum. I said, what do you recommend that I read? What do you recommend that I consume? Got some great feedback. Then I went to my call to hundreds of people, and I said, hey, if you've got a book or a recommendation on momentum, let me have it. And I just took all of that, assimilated. There was a lot of redundancy. People recommended the same thing. Then that became at the top, top of my of list. list. Yeah. And uh, so I have been, in fact, yesterday in a leadership meeting that you and I were in, somebody brought me another book on <laughs> momentum. And I'm just consuming yeah. that and digesting it. So going back to my four hours in the day, I would spend two hours reading a book on the subject matter that I had before mm-hmm. I even started my four-hour day. And it, and again, all that comes back to get people to give you input from their perspective with the clarity and the simplicity that you're going to lead the team. Do the clarity and simplicity on what you're going to grow into. And like you said, I cannot remember, mm-hmm. but one other time maybe that I have been this diligent in being a sponge on content on one piece of subject matter. I have read and consumed. You see it every time I I come into a leadership meeting. I give you a new tidbit that I have read to give us common language on what we're going to do. Yeah, and what I've also seen, and and I haven't mentioned this to you, but uh, I I watched you walk the the fourth quarter and then through the end of the year and the reflection, and there's some discouragement there, certain things, right? All of us have discouragement areas of our life that we wish we grew in, right? But what's been fascinating for me to see, and again, this will be the first time you kind of hearing this out of my mouth, which is when I saw you prioritize that, and I mentioned to you yesterday, this can be so good for the company, but it's been so good for you as a leader because when you prioritize that and this growth and the intentionality of growth that John's talking about here, you become, I mean, happier might be a little bit of a soft word, but you become stronger, you become more confident, you almost become more resilient to that uphill battle that we're taking. And what I love about it is you absolutely, John's second point in the plan is you make that commitment public. Yeah. And you do that. You talk about it. We're talking about it on the podcast. Yeah. But more importantly, you share that with specifically our leadership team every time you come in there. And John says early on in the lesson, what are you doing to develop yourself and others? And I know that we are growing. I've read more books, not, not than you have, but that I did in the first couple weeks of last year because of the challenge that you're putting out with us, what's the intentionality behind sharing not only what you're learning, but sharing what you're consuming and how you're doing it with your team? Three, three reasons, Chris, that comes to mind immediately. And like Chris said, uh, this was not per- scripted or prepared. But three reasons. One is accountability. I always grow better mm. on a personal level so or at a team level because, you, like you said, I wrote that down too. John, how are you growing personally? How are you growing your team? Um I want to put it out there that I want my team, our team, to know that I'm growing and I'm putting it out there. These are the books I'm reading, and then I come and show you what I'm reading with with things that we're doing. That's accountability. The second reason is common language. I want people to know what is driving the the intentionality around my leadership right now. Mm. What's happening is is you're picking up some of those books. Others are picking up that book. So. The common language is now not only get rallying us to the vision and the direction I want to take the organization, it's rallying all of us and how we all are growing. You're growing. Yesterday's leadership meeting, and again, this is just real just family yeah. talk, which I yeah, love this podcast, by the way. Yeah. Yesterday, your 
the way we complimented one mm-hmm. another was staggering to me. I don't think we've ever complimented one another yeah. as much as we did yesterday in that meeting. And I could tell you're reading the books. Ben, you were talking about some of the practices and principles that we're using in the first person. Hey, we've got to. And I went, you go, Chris. Yeah. I don't even have to yeah. say it because it's being repeated. But that brings me to the third thing. When you start saying what the common language is and you start holding yourself accountable, mm-hmm. now you start giving expectation of why we're doing this, the desired good. outcome. That's good. And so we're in the middle of a process right now that's driving a little bit, uh, me, maybe you too, a little bit crazy because I'm ready to act and we're still in the information gathering. Meeting. Meeting, 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 meeting. Yeah, meeting. matter of fact, um, <laughs> I got home last night. And my wife's like, well, how many steps you had today? I was like, I refuse to report. She's like, <laughs> it was awesome. we're going on a walk, right? Because <laughs> I've been with Mark in meetings all day trying to figure this out, yep. right? But we, yep. you got to do that. you got to figure that And that, that's going to drive that common set of outcomes yep. that love you're that. wanting. So it's all based on intentionality. Yeah, I love that. So, you, again, John's second point was you're making it public. We're talking about it to yep. our team. We're talking about to the enterprise. We're talking about it to you here today. John's last point is you're going to share what you're learning, which what you're doing. I want you to close as uh, uh, on this thought of growth. The, you and I could talk about this because um, we 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 are the product, right? We've yeah. just without we've been doing it for a long time. It's what we believe in, and we've seen the growth. John mentioned something I think is really important in here. He's like, "Hey, start off by saying what's one area of growth of choice, and then what's one area of skill." And you every year come out of your time and your reflection with, yes, a word of the year, but you also, being a person of faith, have a, a choice that you make of what you're going to study this year from a growth mm-hmm. standpoint, tie it to leadership, tie it to your growth, whatever. And then you also have a skill set. Talk a little bit about the power of having both of those, how you come to them in your growth journey, and then what that looks like. Yeah. So for me, the the word for the year is kind of the focus. It's mm-hmm. kind of the the, the aspiration, the idea, the skill set comes in in what I set with rigor. I have in my growth plan, I have daily, weekly, and monthly rigors, rhythms, things that I've got to deliver every day, every week, every month to complement the word, the concept. Got it. And so I think what, what I feel like John's talking about here is – if you don't have skill sets to go along with the strengths, if you don't have rigors and disciplines to go along with the word, then it's going to sound nice, but you're not going to see that tangible momentum. Yeah. And that's what uh, I have found. The people that are the most effective today, people that are listening and viewing this podcast, you, you're writing it down. I'm proud of you. Congratulations. I'd give you a standing ovation um, if I could. But it's the people that get an action item, something that is a skill, something that is a discipline that's going to bring the greatest amount of results after a conversation like Mm -hmm. this. I hope that between John, Chris, or myself, we've given you a note to capture. And I'm sure we have because John has. John, John, So we're good. But what I hope just as much, not more than, but just as much is you put a a, a skill, a challenge, a, an application to it that will make you effective. I do a year in review every year. I'm reading a lot of books on momentum, but I'm telling you, it's these meetings that we're having that is making that more powerful. Yeah. The the idea, the concept, the the discipline without the skill application would render it useless. I would contend, maybe a little bit of useful, but I'm going to tell you, learning without application is not growth. Yeah. Remind us again, how many years you've been with John? 23. 23 years. And you would admit, and you did, and I would absolutely back you up on this, the last 90 days, for the greatest growth you've had. 23 years with the greatest leadership organization and, and leader that you and I know, and yet you're still growing at a pace. Like that's what we should strive to do. That's what yeah. makes things better. Um, as again, as we wrap, one little question on this: you you spend all this intentionality, you build this growth plan. How often do you review it? How often do you go and check it? How often do you hold yourself accountable to it? Because what I want our listeners to do is, I man, I want them to develop a growth plan because we want them. We we know what's on the other side of that. It does doesn't always get easier. Sometimes it gets even harder. Mm -hmm. But man, we want that for you because everybody deserves to be led well. And we want to add value to you. And this is the best way. And John talked about this is where he started. This is where you need to start. 
you can be intentional about it and you can develop that. And then maybe never look at it again and kind of how often do you, that rigor that you developed and you try to follow, as you wrap up, how, how often do you check that and hold yourself accountable to it and adjust it or maybe just check the box? So in the first 60 days of a year, I'm reviewing it every day. I reviewed it this morning. I'll review it tomorrow morning. I'll review it Saturday. I'll review it Sunday. Got it. I'm reviewing it every day. It's got to get in me for it to drive mm. behaviors, to cultivate skill sets like we talked about, to develop habits. Yeah. So it's, a, it's an everyday rigor that I will do every year for the first 60 days. I'm reading it every day. Got I'm it. familiarizing myself. Then it pairs back uh, probably to once a week. And then by the third and fourth quarter, it is probably twice a month that I'm pulling it out and reviewing and reflecting. One of the disciplines that I have is in a year-end review this year, some years years it's monthly, some years it's bi-monthly, some years it's quarterly, I will go and assess and tweak the plan based on the effectiveness the plan has had then Mm -hmm. so that that plan that I got in one setting is a living, breathing Love organism that it. makes sense. That makes sense. Right. I, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things that I want to do to to wrap today um, that I, I feel really strong about. There, there's two things that I want to challenge you to do personally because I'm so passionate about personal growth. And it's it's only the, um, what is this, the 18th of the month. It, it's... Um, it, it's really, if you're listening to it live, some of you will listen to it. It's, it's, we're only 18 days into this year. Take me to uh, this whole concept. Before you can intentionally grow, you've got to have this plan. You've got to have a growth mindset. Yeah. So how do you begin to put into practice? Give me some practical things of how a leader can get into a practice of developing this growth mindset. Oh, growth mindset is one of my favorite topics in positive I've heard psychology. you speak on it, and she's really good. <laughs> So there is uh, quite a few researchers involved, but one of the main ones is Dr. Carol Dweck. She wrote a book called Mindset. That was really a life-changing um, thought process for me. So basically, many of us are um, grow up praised for being smart or being talented, or even as adults, we thrive on that, right? And it's about your natural gifts, and we praise people for that. But what Dr. Dweck and other researchers discovered is that that's not the most important thing. Effort is actually more important. We're actually capable of doing a lot more than we realize, but we often say, well, I don't have that gift. I don't have that talent. I'm not that smart at whatever it is, right? We can actually learn and grow. So those who have a fixed mindset tend to believe that their talents, their gifts are set. And the reason that's a problem is because when they get to a challenge, they can't figure out or they face a problem they haven't come up with a solution for, they think it's a condemnation on their intelligence or their talent. And so oftentimes you might find yourself shrinking away from a challenge because you're afraid it's going to show people, Mm -hmm. I'm not as great as you think I am. What she discovered, or she actually discovered this working with gifted and talented students, is that a, a growth mindset looks at a problem that it can't figure out and says, oh, there's something more for me to learn. They're not actually intimidated by the challenge they can't figure out. They're actually inspired by it. They actually realize, oh, well, I was smart enough to do all this other stuff. If I work a little harder, if I learn, if I ask around, maybe I'm going to get smarter. Maybe I could be more talented. And so she called this a growth mindset. And it really applies. It applies in our leadership abilities. I had to apply this because I didn't use the word leader. Yeah. And I was leading, and I didn't consider myself a leader. (laughs) Um, It applies in relationships. Maybe you didn't grow up with great relationship role models. And so you're like, I'm just not good at this. Well, what if you could get better at it? You know, it could be the same in finances or health. So developing a growth mindset is essential. Otherwise, we back down from opportunities that are in front of us because we're just afraid it, it means something that it doesn't actually mean. Well, it, it reminds me, I had on this podcast several years ago, Carly Fiorina, yeah. a former CEO of Hewlett Packard, done some incredible things. And, you know, John Maxwell, all of you listening to the podcast, you know, John defines leadership as uh, influence, nothing more, nothing less. Carly was on this podcast and she said, you know, Mark, leadership is really problem solving, nothing more, nothing less. And I went, ooh, don't tell John Maxwell that. <laughs> He's always thought it was influence. But what she was really saying is it's a mindset. 
that leaders don't see problems as a reason to vacate leadership. They see it as an opportunity to step into That's leadership. That's the point. That's and why that we need leaders. That's why, <laughs> that is exactly why we need yeah. leaders. This idea that there is a degree of uncertainty to leadership. It is a fact of life. Our ability to change our mindset, whether it's growth, whether it's leadership, comes in our ability to change the mindset. And wouldn't you agree, most of the time, we can't unlock our mindset without help. We have to be open. To be able to grow is to say, and, and especially if you were praised in certain areas and your identity is set with those areas, to be able to say, yeah, there are some levels I haven't reached, but do I want to achieve my potential? Do I want to learn more? Is it okay for me to not know the answer or not be great at this yet? I mean, that's powerful. So on a practical level, I would say, where is that area that you always shy away from? Mm. You know, maybe, maybe you're in marketing and you're like, I'm just, I don't understand the accounting. I'm just not good at that. Okay, but would you be willing to learn something in that area? That doesn't mean you need to become an accountant, but if you understand accounting, you're going to be much better at marketing. You're actually going to expand the number of opportunities you have because you're understanding all the needs of the company in a bigger way. And so just being able to say, yeah, I could learn from here. The growth mindset says where I am today is a starting point. Wow. This isn't the end. This, I haven't you know, reached this, this lid that I can't get above. I get to raise the lid and grow. And that in itself is powerful. To me, that's, that's the exciting part of personal growth, that you're willing to keep growing and that it's not any kind of condemnation on who you are when you don't know answers. So then you, you get this epiphany, perhaps for some, mm -hmm. I need to grow, I need to unlock myself. There's a blind spot mm -hmm. that I have. How important is it from your perspective, and she's a life coach, so that, that I understand that. How important is it your perspective, that follow through and that companionship or that partnership as you begin to unlock these things that's holding you back from growth? Yeah. So I think this is, this is something I discovered for myself. So I, you know, I love any kind of positive psychology assessment, like figure out who I am. I've got, you know, I created one around happiness triggers, the things that just kind of trigger your happiness naturally. Well, I love doing the ones on strengths. And there's, there's a character strength survey that's called the VIA, but there's also the Strengths Finder, which is Gallup. And there's a strength on there that I envied, which is terrible. <laughs> you had strength envy. Yes, I did. I did. And my husband had it in his top five. And I don't know where it was for That's me. even worse. You envy yeah. it, and then it's your, yeah. your significant Yeah, other. and I was like, it, it was called Activator. Activators, when they have, like, like there's, there's an opportunity, they go. Like, I'm an overthinker. Anyone else in here? Overanalyze. You yeah. have an idea. It takes you like five years to like move forward with it, right? I analyze it. I plan it. I write the plan. I write the vision. I'm a visionary, but I mean, activate. I was like, I want activator, but those activators, they like, they just, they just run into stuff. Like you need a plan. Like so, you know, this was this was difficult for me. Well, I actually retook the Strengths Finder, and activator was in my top five. Come on. And this is how I did it. I'm also a learner. I love learning. And I began to tie learning to action. Wow. In other words, rather than feeling like I had to be perfect and have the whole plan figured out, I realized that action is how you learn. So I would just say to myself, what action could I do? What could I learn? What action could I take that would teach me something that gets me closer to the goal? And so that's a growth mindset that you say, I, I'm taking a step forward. The step doesn't have to be perfect. This might not, this might not work, wow. but I'm still going to learn something from it. And so that freed me because I had not given myself permission to take action unless I had all the answers first. But when I, when I just made that simple mental shift because I love learning, I love growing, and I said, well, you grow by taking action. And the thing was, I always teach that with coaching. In between coaching sessions, you take action. And then you come to the next session and you go, huh, what happened? What did you learn? If nothing happened, there's still something to learn. If you procrastinated, let's dive into that. So I realized I knew that on a philosophical and a professional level, but applying it to myself actually helped me to activate my activator. That's <laughs> it, awesome. it helped me to take action more often. That is so encouraging. So if anybody's got strength envies, 
She knows how to help you get past that. <laughs> so just real quick, did you take your test to your husband and say, ha, ha, ha? I mean, did, did we get, I'm just kidding. I didn't, but he was so proud of me. I was like, yeah. you will not believe this. Like, I want an activator. <laughs> and, you know, your, your natural strengths generally, you know, the ones that are just innate, they're going to stay pretty sure. high for you. But you can be intentional about saying, I want more of this in my life, like on the, on the other strengths assessment, I wanted more humor and playfulness. That's Jeff's number one, by the way. So if you don't ha have it, you can marry it. Right? There you go. Have your date take a strengths marry the assessment. Party. I'm looking for. <laughs> I want a party. <laughs> but I did the same with that. I was like, I, I want more humor and playfulness. And so you can take strengths that you want and be intentional about incorporating those more because strengths really are just values in action. It's, it's what we set in motion because we value it. Welcome to the Maxwell Leadership Executive Podcast, where our goal is to help you increase your reputation as a leader, increase your ability to influence others, and increase your ability to fully engage your team to deliver remarkable results. 